Hey, this is gonna be a quick little fun video uh, if you're interested about me changing the springs and changing the lugs on one of the axles. Um, again, it's gonna just be a very quick and simple video. The reason I have to weld is because on the uh, spring on one side it's like this, while the other side is a regular just bolt. I'm also gonna be switching it out with a longer um, spring and this spring is actually Gonna have the axle sitting a little bit further back because I actually have an issue whenever I load material up on this. Um, it's just, just barely. Uh, they have to first place a pallet and then back up with the forklift and then pick it up and move it again. Uh, it just barely gets the pallet over on the front. So having it, having the axle a little bit backwards, it helps a ton. For those that don't know, the reason why you want your weights up on the front or in front of the axle is because on a trailer when you're hauling it, if the weights on the back or it's back heavy uh, you'll literally just have the trailer swinging like crazy I uh, had a couple bad experiences with that so uh, that's why you always want to have the uh, heaviest load on the front so pretty much the tongue is going down I've actually changed the lugs on the other side of the axle before um, I should have done both sides because obviously this one is gonna fail soon um, but well now it's time to change this one I got three lug nuts that are spinning on me. Ah, oh, damn it. This is the lowest I could get this stand, and uh, it doesn't get a good enough angle as you saw. That was getting kind of dangerous. So I'm gonna switch to this little flimsy plastic thing to get you guys a good view. I had the trailer jacked up, but uh, as you saw, this thing. The tire was just spinning around freely, um, so I need to lower down and stationary on the ground so I can properly cut it. So close. There we go. There we go, one out, two more to go. I just need a bit of a hair more, so I'm going to switch it out for this blade, which is just a little bit bigger. I mean, as I was cutting it, it gets worn out, so, yeah. Um, I'm going to cut as much as I can on the second one first, though, and then I'm going to switch out to the final blade to get that little, just, it's just the hair, it's so small.
So these are lugs, as you see, they have these little knurls that just slides, slides into the hub. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, just gotta take this auto zone and find a matching one. Okay, I've been whacking at this shit a long ass time and I'm getting pissed off for those that are gonna ask Why don't I put penetration oils? Cause I can't f find it, so uh, leave me alone But yeah, so I think I'm just gonna cut this off either way It's the, you can see the threads are pretty bad on this um, But yeah, uh, I'm just gonna cut it off and put in a new bolt This thing does not want to move. It is just the hair slightly moved. Um, I'm going to try whacking it a couple more times with a hammer. <sighs> Please come out. So what's going on is there's uh, this like plastic bushing thing. And typically the, the bolts that get stuck actually inside of that. They like weld into the plastic. Yes, got it out. All right, I got it out. Uh, one other thing I realized is if you notice later, I put the jack up. Um, this whole tra uh, the whole trailer was sitting on uh, the spring. So another reason why it was probably really hard to take it out was because all the load was pushing on top of that um, <sighs> that that nut. I mean, regardless, I needed to change it out. But yeah, um, pretty nice. All I got left is these four bolts, and uh, yeah, and then I have to weld another uh, J you thing like this over here somewhere and uh looking at these bolts i think these are also probably gonna have to be cut out and replaced um yeah i'm like 98 percent sure they have to yeah these are all gonna be have to cut out too damn it since i either way have to cut these out i'm gonna take the axle off on the other side too you know since i'm at it so i don't have to cut from underneath Instead, I can just, you know, take the axle out and then uh, cut it, uh, rotate around and cut it normally. So there, I tried taking the lug nuts off. Uh, the, the tire was just spinning freely. I think I have enough space just to be able to take this uh, nuts off. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just try that because I mean, I don't, I don't need to change the lug nuts. Uh, the, the lugs on that one, they're fine. Uh, I just need to change the spring on this side. Alrighty, I think the same issue as last time. The nut is freely spinning, so I'm just gonna cut this one off too. Hopefully it's this time since this entire weight is not on the tire. It should be easier. If you saw that, but the first one, it uh, kind of flew out. Um, because the uh, you know the the nut it was holding the whole thing in compression and I released that spring tension so the next one I gotta be uh, more careful on but yeah I got uh got the well it's sitting on the concrete. What they do here is they price it per pound, um, so you know pretty much you just uh, get a a baggie fill it up and then at the register they weigh it out. So here's the uh, bolt I need, I need a little longer. I found it to be just this match, which is uh, 9 sixteenths, and I'm gonna just go with three and a half, just to have a little extra. Um, typically they're <laughs> messed up like this, and you have to find out. I mean, typically they're, you know, properly sorted, but sometimes people, uh, here you go, four bolts. And here's the nuts for them. This is the only thing they have in stock for my U bolts, so I'm gonna try to think of something else.
All right, so I couldn't find any U-bolts uh, at the store or at online uh, that match exactly the size. So I just got fed up and uh, trying to find crap. And instead, I'm just going to go with one of these. I'm just going to punch two holes, cut it to size, and just make it a sandwich, you know, with some two old threads that go through. Yeah, better than trying to mess around. And, I mean, I have some scrap steel laying around, so not too hard just to punch two holes. Three and a half. This is 14. Oh, hair, hair over 14. So we'll just split it in half and a half again, and we'll get seven and a half, three and a half, and then that's ten and a half. This is probably my most favorite uh, tool for, <laughs> for punching metals or just, you know, putting holes in uh, steel. Um, I highly, highly suggest this. It is, you'll see how really easy it is. Um, it, so you can, you can uh, connect this to an electric pump. Uh, right now I just have it connected to this. Um, so yeah. And as you see, the only thing I don't like about this, so uh, this you could buy, I think it was like 150. And then um, the pump is also about 150 so the whole setup will uh, run you about $300. Uh, what I don't like is these these things, how expensive these are. These can be up towards $20, $25 each. Um, they are very pricey. Um, you might probably get them cheaper on AliExpress. Um, since I do have a lathe, I'd like to just you know be able to uh, mill my own out. Um, but yeah, these dies, uh, it comes with a set, um, you know, with a couple, uh, it comes with like four different sizes. Another great thing about these things is they come with, uh, on the dies, they have this little um, spike, which just perfectly makes it so easy to sender. I mean, if you've ever tried drilling uh, holes in steels, you know how difficult it is. Um, so whenever you just, you know, if you have a punch set, which I should have probably used for this, um, but oh well, I mean, it doesn't need to be accurate. And again, the hole's going to be larger than uh, than the bolt. So, but yeah, highly, highly suggest these things. They're, they're, they're so, so useful, so easy. Alright, as you saw, the first couple ones were a little hard to take these out, but I figured out all you do is you get the pry bar on the uh, one side and you just keep, you know, hold pressure and whack on the other side. Uh, yeah, typically, it's really easy, it's just since these pieces are short on one end, um, it doesn't have that bracket to help push it down. Um, but yeah, so pretty much all I'm gonna do is have it like this and just have two all threads go up. So here's the altar that I want to use. Uh, only problem is it's just the hair too small. Just the hair too small. Um, same thing with this one though. It just barely fits. Not really. Um, yeah, just just barely. So uh, I'm gonna get a drill bit and just go go by through all these really quickly and make them just a hair bigger. So what I'm right now doing now doing is I just cut it off the on the cutoff saw the alt thread and it has a little burr there so obviously it's, it's very difficult to put it on there. So what I'm doing is cutting a bit of an angle and cleaning that burr so that I could just put on the nut. I got one of these. I just saw uh, Roll King has a bunch of bolts and stuff, and uh, I very like that. <laughs> and whenever I have a project or whatever, I just come by, grab whatever I need, um, and yeah. And occasionally, whenever I go to buy pig feed, uh, I just if I see one of these are empty, so these probably I need to buy some more. Um, I also have lock nuts, wing washers, um, regular nuts. And over here, so I'll have like, for example, regular nuts and then stainless steel nuts. Um, and then these lock washers, nuts, um, the lock washers. I don't know where my lock washers and my regular washers for this size is. Um, 
I'll just use these since they should work too. You want at least two or three th threads up on the top and down on the bottom, so uh, what I do is I grab this channel lock and just screw on all one end, because otherwise if you just screw, or let's say you screw on this side, see it'll just move the whole alt thread. So that's why you want to grab the alt thread with this and screw it just two or three threads on top. Alrighty, so I got this side done. Um, had a lot better than this tiny U-bolt that was on before. Now I got these far thicker lug uh, alt threads. But yeah, uh, all I got left is to do this side and to put these on. Um, and then I have to weld on here. Uh, change this to a different size. I might be worried that um, since this is going to go further back, it might be touching this. I might have to move this. Uh, we'll see if not. That's not too big a deal. It's just got to cut here, uh, here, there, and then re-weld it. Hey, so this project took a lot longer than I expected. Uh, total is about a day and a half of work. Um, so I'm going to split this into a two-part series since it's approaching about a half an hour long footage. Um, if you like, subscribe, like. I'll upload a second part this weekend. Uh, in that part, it'll have the welding and uh, a little more fun stuff for you to watch.